Rebecca Harris and welcome to this edition of Senior Moments and today we're here for brunch and learn at the Phoenix City Library and here's my good buddy mm -mm. Pat Harrell. It's a great day. It yes, is a it great is. day to be here and I just love you always being able to talk to you. You are just wonderful. Well thank you. I, I just get so excited about brunch and learn and you work very hard to get the guests to come, the guest speakers because you choose things that are interesting to seniors. I try to. I, I, I try to, to find things that are interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And if they're interesting to me, then I feel certain they're interested, uh, other seniors are interested. Well, actually, it's interesting to everybody because, you know, everybody has difficulty with their vision at one right. point or another, whether you get an accident or whether your vision is constantly changing or just there's a number of different things. And so you invited your doctor. I did, Dr. Sterling Cannon. Yes, I love that name, Sterling. I do. We're gonna have to ask and him I if love that's him. a family name. <laughs> oh yeah, oh that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, well I've heard you talk a lot about him, so tell me just a little bit about him so everybody will know what we're in for. Well, I, I really have dealt with him because of my dry eyes. Mm -hmm. And I was sent to him and just fell in love with him. He's made an amazing difference for me. Uh, it's taken some time, but I highly recommend him to, to anyone. Well, that's great. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing him talk to us today and give us an education about eye care. And today's topic is what not to do yes. for healthy eyes. I know one thing you told me when we were talking about this is that you learned right off the bat not to use tissue mm. on your eyes. That's right. And then I found out uh, Q-tips are just, it's the same thing. Uh, I think he called it like sand rubbing sandpaper in your eyes. <laughs> and I was just amazed because we all do it. Right. We always do it right at the corner of our eyes and do not think about it, that is a wood product. So all you're doing is scratching your eyes. That's right. Well, I'm excited to learn more about it. I've always had issues with my eyes. So we're going to turn the program now over to Dr. Sterling Cannon. And Ms. Pat, thank you for everything that you do with this Brunch and Learn program. Thank you. Tell us again when you have this program so that maybe next month folks can come out and, att and attend. We have it every month, the third Wednesday mm -hmm. of each month, and it's at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. from 10 until 11. We do blood pressure checks starting at 9.30 until 10. We always provide wonderful refreshments, compliments of regional rehab. Yes. They have been so generous to supply muffins and the best fruit uh -huh. and juice and you need to come. You're <laughs> always missing a good program, always. If you're not here and you're not listening, you are missing something. And once again, I want to let you know that we're going to post this on YouTube, so go to CTV Beam YouTube and look it up, and you can share this information with your friends as well. So, Ms. Pat, let's get this program started. Let's do. Let's get going. Don't rub your eyes. Don't dig mucus out of your eyes. You know, the eye is coated in cells whose sole purpose in life is to coat solid stuff in mucus. Your finger and tissue, no exception, right? So if you rub in there as much as you think, your eyelids are closed underneath that tissue, cloth, sleeve, neighbor's sleeve, whatever, it opens up a little bit. And then you scrape right across the surface and you get mucus problems. And then you wipe more because you're trying to get that mucus out. And guess what you get? More mucus, like manna. You know, you keep taking it, it keeps coming. But um, uh, so don't rub your eyes. Try and figure out what's going on with your eye fix that problem. If it's itching, use an allergy drop. Find out what's setting your eye off. You know, if you know, every time I get next to, you know, Aunt Susie or whatever, my eyes are just start watering and itching. You're allergic to Aunt Susie, <laughs> not Aunt Susie. <laughs> whatever a hair care product or, you know, perfume or whatever's in there. Soap, every time I, you know, when I get out of the shower, my eyes are just itching. Change soaps, all right? Or, you know, I wake up in the morning, my eyes are itching. Change laundry detergents. Get a hypoallergen pillow, something like that. Make yourself more comfortable. Splurge. Um, and then, yeah, control allergies. Warm compresses. If your eyes are mucusy and irritated and stuck together in the morning, take a hot, wet washcloth. You lay it up there, you let it sit. Don't wipe after you take it off, okay? Because, again, you wipe, generates more mucus. 
take a hot wet washcloth, soak, and then remove, and then open. Whatever mucus there gets to stay, because if you wipe that mucus off, it's going to make more mucus. All right, I was like, that's too many mucus in this from one paragraph. All right, there we go. Um, anybody know this guy? Oh, Robert De Niro? The former head of the house. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yep, there you go. All right, now talking about sun damage, I see he's probably either been spray tanned, which is safer, but you know, again, that's a little too much uh, melanin for his skin type, I think. All right, um, yeah, and about our sun, like I went over this, it's big, it's hot. You just protect yourself from it. Protect your kids and grandkids from the sun. The sun is not your friend. It is great. Grow stuff. You know, you get uh, you know a great, beautiful day like it is outside. But um, it can give you a lot of skin cancer problems, aging, and things like that. Uh, you know, tan should not look healthy. Make you know, it, healthy is healthy. And the reason this is just such a thing is because I deal with eyelid cancers a lot, a lot more than I should, and it's because people get out of the sun. That's the biggest cause of eyelid cancers. And when you take them off, it leaves a hole, and eyelids pretty valuable real estate. So, um, and it's quick, 10 minutes on a sunny day like this, and you got some sun damage. So, uh, there you go. And that's somebody, <laughs> that's somebody that I always like going to the beach because you can see like uh, who's been to the beach before and who doesn't know how to put on sunscreen. So that's somebody's back that's been. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do it themselves. All right, eyelid malposition. If you rub your eye and you are prone to get some eyelid laxity, this can happen. And you may know people that are like this, have that eyelid turned out and hanging down on your cheek. Um, that is called ectropion. Um, entropion is just the opposite. So if you think of the eyelid as a volleyball net, if you loosen it up, it'll flop in or out based on which side pushing or pulling the hardest. Both of those I can fix surgically. It's not a big deal. It's a surgery, but it's something that we can fix. So if you see somebody like this, say, hey, go get that fixed. But, um, uh, but if you know somebody that's got loose eyelid tissue, I don't know how you know that, but, but basically just tell them not to rub their eye. Because if you see somebody really digging in there, um, you know, you loosen it up enough and this happens. And then you need a surgery. And if we can keep you from having a surgery, that's great. Um, ptosis is just where your eyelids are dropped down. So if you like, even if you lift all this up and you're still like, ah, I can't see anything. Um, uh, that's ptosis and that's a muscle problem. The muscle has come loose and we can fix that as well by repositioning that muscle again. And insurance covers that. So come on and we can take care of you. Anybody know who that guy is? No? There you go, nice. Um, now that's entropion. Entropion is one of my favorite things to fix because that is a miserable patient right there. If, you, if somebody's lashes are rolled over onto the surface of their eye, they are not happy. And we can help you. You know, Basically, this is because the muscle that closes the eye is pushing that eyelid over onto the eyeball. And, um, and we, can, we can help that. There you go. Alright. Okay. Um, yeah, contact lenses. Um, you know, basically contact lenses are great uh, devices, but it's a foreign body sitting on your eyeball. So if your glasses wear, that's much safer because you don't have something sitting on your eyeball that can harbor bacteria and things like that. Um, and you want to make sure that you get that fit every year. Go to, you know, if you're over here, go to Gordy. Gordy's awesome. We've got people over at our office. Um, but you just want to make sure that that's a good fit every year. Because it's like shoes. If you wear, you know, if you wear a callus in your heel, well, that's no big deal. If you wear a callus on your cornea, that's a big deal, and you can get lots of infection problems and things like that. As it breaks down the surface, and the cornea is not built to deal with infection. Um, uh, here, yeah, okay. So here we go. Eyelid cancers. This is a basal cell. So you know, that's a wedge of eyelid that's coming out because that thing, you know, but. Don't let it get that far. If you see a bump growing on your eyelid, go get it taken care of. It's a crazy, you know, a proportion of people that will let things grow uh, on their face and not take care of it. So if you see something on somebody else's eyelid, you know, don't be shy to say, hey, you should go get that checked out because sometimes it's something bad. A lot of times it's not. And people grow little tags and things like that. You got one? I have a little small place, but it was from, I had eye surgery about eight years ago that Right, you know. Yeah. And uh, I had it done over at the restaurant guy. There you go. And, but since then, 
I had the little scar has stayed where they gave me the shot. That's okay. And it caused a little tiny bump to come up. If you get, like, sometimes little bumps um, next to scars can be epidermal inclusion cysts where skin gets trapped under skin and keeps doing what skin does, where it's, you know, making more skin, only instead of schluffing to the outside world, packs itself into a little bubble and makes a lump. And so that's, you know, but we can take care of that. And you don't know, even if it's in the same area, you're not sure that it's related. It's just in the same area. So, you know, you always well, want to get stuff like my that. My dermatologist too. looked at it last week and I went to her and there she said I wanted anything to worry about. There you go. You get it checked out. Dermatologist can check it out. And, and everybody should be going to a dermatologist once a year anyway, just to check and make sure it's okay. Skin is the largest organ in your body, right? So, you know, you want to, you know, have somebody take a lap around. Um, this is a, a defect like that getting reconstructed. And so this poor person is going to have their eyelid closed for about eight weeks because we dropped a little graft down from the upper lid down to fill the gap in that lower lid. Um, and the smaller it is when we get it, the less likely we are going to have to do a big re reconstruction. So that's the thing. And that goes for any bump on your body. You're like, hey, wait, that's growing. Get it checked out. Um, Tearing, okay, so here we go. Um, you know, if you've got, uh, it, it's hard not to tear at some point. You know, you know, you're not sad, your eye just waters up, right? Well, why does your eye water up? Your eye waters up because that's his only defense against stuff, right? So if you're in a dust storm, what's it gonna do? Water, because it, you know, it's like, hey, we gotta get the dust out of here before it scratches us. <laughs> does that and makes mucus, right? Those are the two things. Coat it in mucus, rinse it out. So that's, you know, a lot of times I see a lot of tearing problems because you can also have an obstruction in your tear drain right here, and that's a surgical problem. But most of the time, it's this. Um, anybody know who this is, dabbing her eye? This is this you do. This was sort of way back, but I like because she's dabbing her eye, and I tell people not to dab their eye all the time. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she was all weepy. That was American Idol, that's it. Anyway, but um, uh, a lot of times people have inflammation on the margin of their eyelid, um, and that is what causes the mucus when you wake up in the morning. And styes, so if you get a lot of styes, you probably have blepharitis. Blepharitis is kind of the diarrhea of ophthalmology, the annoying. I don't really know what causes it. Comes and goes. Not going to blind you or hurt you, but super annoying. And there's some things that you can do to help it out if it's happening to you. So hot compresses a couple times a day. Don't wipe the mucus out. Some people say put the baby shampoo on a washcloth and scrub your eye. I don't know. It offends my sensibilities. I spend most of my shower trying to keep shampoo out of my eye. So I don't like that at all. I just use a hot wet washcloth a couple times a day. Just soak for about five minutes and it helps loosen up those oil glands and help them move on through so that your eye feels better. That oil is part of your tear film. Okay, so it keeps the tear trapped on your eye. It keeps the tear from breaking up and running off, making your eye scratchy. All right, so um, don't rub your eye. Don't dab it. Um, tissue. Uh, yeah, don't use tissue near your eye unless you're doing way down here. Tissue's made of wood pulp, nasty, highly chemically treated wood pulp. So your eye looks like mulch. So don't put mulch in your eye, right? Nobody do that, it's silly. Um, uh, you know, but all you have to do is get near your eye with that mulch tissue, and it gets in your eye. You flip the tissue in front of a sunbeam. You know what comes out? Mulch. So don't get it near your eye. It feels soft. To your eye, it is not soft. You know, you wouldn't put it in your mouth, right? So don't put it in your eye. Um, okay, blinking, artificial tears. Yeah, so people say, oh, I've got tearing. I don't have dry eye, I've got tear eye. It's different. Uh, think of it this way. If your eyes are dry, <coughs> your eye waters, because it's trying to think something's in the eye, like dust. Wrong, but that's what it thinks, and so it tries to rinse it out. But it's the same concept if your hands are dry, you run them under the faucet 40 times, now they're super dry, right? Because you just rinsed off all the good oil that came from that gland that got clogged up in our last slide. But um, uh, your eye is drier after you've been tearing a lot and usually dabbing and irritating your eye. Find out what you just did, and then before you do that thing again, put a moisturizing drop in your eye. They shouldn't call it artificial tears. I don't think that makes any sense. Put it like an eye moisturizer, all right? 
Um, especially things like reading, driving long distances, things where you're staring at stuff. Because when you're staring at stuff, especially computer screens, you're sitting there, da -da 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 stuff starts blurring out on you and you kind of, uh, yeah, there you go. You just dried out, okay? If that helps, if blinking helps you see better, you just dried out, put a moisturizing drop in before you do that activity again. And your eyes probably won't reflex here and you'll see clearer. So you get a bunch of stuff um, just from one little drop. Um, I know dabbing time, I've already been on the tissue bandwagon. Anybody know who this is? This is an oldie but goodie. Bam, you're on fire. I like it because the brows are so expressive. Uh, you know, that's, I mean, you, you can just look at her eyes and tell what she was thinking, which is, yeah, she's so sad. All right. Um, this is why you shouldn't uh, uh, just get like flea market contacts or whatever and put them in, and you should take the contact lens out at night the way it was intended. They have like month long contacts. I tell people that, yeah, if they made like month-long underwear, would you do that? <laughs> so, you know, just, right, take them out, clean those things, put it back in, let your eye take a break. Because that's a corneal ulcer. That patient is either getting a corneal transplant or the eye's coming out. That's not a happy picture. And that's a red eye. Don't ignore a red eye. And I'll say that again before we get done here. Hi, I'm Rebecca Harris, and welcome to this edition of Senior Moments. Today, we're going to be talking about vision. And we have sayings that we say sometimes, like the blind leading the blind. And those things really aren't funny when you start to think about losing your vision. So today we have Dr. Sterling Cannon here with us. And I'm so excited because I've been through a lot of things with my eyes. And I learned a lot today from his conversation that he's had here at Brunch and Learn at the Phoenix City Library. So I know you need to get back to your office, but if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Absolutely. And thanks for having me. Well, first of all, I love your name, Sterling. Yeah. Is that a family okay. name? It is a family name. It's my great-great-grandfather was Wiley Sterling Lane, and so mm -hmm. um, uh, I got Sterling Lane Cannon, and I passed that along to my child as uh, uh, Sterling Lane's my oldest, so. Well, that's great. Where are you from? Originally from Lakeland, Florida. Uh, but here by way of my in-laws, so <laughs> that's a, um, you know, I never thought I'd be super jazzed to live in town with my in-laws until my oldest was two weeks old. Uh -huh. and my mother-in-law came in and was like, hey, can I change them and feed them and put them back to bed? I was like, here's the key, sure. here's the alarm code. You never have to ask that again. So, yeah. Well, what made you decide to go into this field? Ophthalmology is great because you can make a huge difference in someone's life in a tiny amount of time. Right. So it suits my ADD perfectly. <laughs> no, no it's, a, it, it's great because, you know, your, your vision is, is one of your most, if not the most precious right. sense, sense you have, and people fear losing it. So you can, you can uh, help people enjoy their lives a lot better uh, very quickly um, with, with short procedures is fantastic. So that's what really attracted me to the field. Well, where do you work? West Georgia Eye Care. Uh, work at the main office, although we have um, two other locations, one in the north of, and one um, by the hospital down here. And I heard you say earlier that there are a lot of other specialists there. Right. Uh, we've got a you know glaucoma specialist, two glaucoma specialists, two um, cornea specialists, um, uh, retina specialist, just a uh, lot of, we cover all of our bases mm -hmm. here, which is fantastic because if you have someone with multiple problems, we've got, uh, we've got someone to take care of, which is, which is great, and it's a great place to work because they're very friendly. And nice. Well, we're very fortunate to have a facility like that because, like you said, it's a one-stop shop. Exactly. Kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes when we have one problem, it leads to another problem. Exactly, yeah. It's our, you know, it, uh, the eye, there's just so much that, <laughs> that can't go wrong with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a sensitive organ, but, uh, again, it, there's, you know, there's a lot of research in each one of those problems and different ways to help it. And so that's, that's the benefit of having multiple people following those different disease processes that can, can help the patient. It's great. Well, we're going to be checking in on your little talk that you had here with the seniors here at the Phoenix City Library. Great. But what I wanted to ask you is how do you feel about all of the changes that are going on now with, with technology and people reading on the internet and trying to self-diagnose themselves? 
It's hard because, you know, there's there's always a, a buck to be gained mm -hmm. by convincing you that you need to buy the supplement or, right. or do this one thing or, you know, and so the, you know, the the snake oil market's pretty, you know, pretty ripe and uh, takes no time for someone to put up, oh, you need to do this right. or, um, you know, this is great for this. and. And it's hard for someone without a medical degree to sort through all that. Now, I'm not saying we have all the answers right. at all uh, because there's a ton we don't know. But there are some things that we do know that do help. And if we can steer a patient towards those things, that's great. And if we can steer them away from some things that, um, you know, maybe advertise to help but actually harm, right. that's great as well. So it's hard. It's just hard to tell. Now, there are some great outlets there. It's just knowing what's what's legitimate and what's not. That's the difficult part. So, but it's always best to go and see an expert. Yeah. Well, we we can tell you what we know, and that's uh, that's that's a lot because we know a lot because we you know you can know a lot about a tiny organ, and that's what we do. <laughs> so, well, just as important as it is to get um, immediate help if you're having a stroke or a heart attack, it's also important to get immediate help if something is going on with your eyes. So uh, tell us some of the things that we need to come and see a doctor for immediately if we have something going on with our eyes. Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, things, to, uh, things that we see as, a, as sort of urgent problems. Mm -hmm. One, you get an injury. You know, you get an injury to your eye, get it checked out because right. that's an urgent problem. Um, other things that are more subtle that a lot of people have but can be a sign of something a lot more serious, uh, sudden onset of floaters and flashes. You know, everybody gets floaters and flashes, mm -hmm. you live long enough, but you get a bunch of new ones, or certainly you see a curtain come down over your vision, call us because that could be a sign of retinal tear or detachment. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some things that we can do if we catch it a tear right. uh, to help prevent it from turning into a retinal detachment, which is a big deal. Red painful eye. Eye should not hurt. But eyes are very good at knowing something's wrong and will get your attention. Mm -hmm. Eyes are very bad at knowing what is wrong, but we are. So we can, you know, the, the come on in and we can help, you know, f figure out what's going on with the eye. Um, you could have inflammation in the eye, uh, acute angle closure glaucoma, which can all both can, you know, ruin your vision. That's uh, things that we can sort of head off before that train leaves the station. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're about. So. So the talk that you gave us today was about what not to do with your eyes. Right. And yeah. one thing that you talked about is using the computer and to put drops in your eyes if you're going to be doing oh, something yes. that's strenuous. Because I, I know that since I have retired, my vision seems to have improved because I was spending a lot of time in front of the computer and I did not realize what that was doing to my eyes. Right. We're not, well, you know, we're creatures that are designed to be outside and, mm -hmm. you know, walking around, which is great, but there's a lot of fun information that you got on the new technology. It's right. a, you know, but we're not designed to look at screens. When we do, our blink rate goes down, mm -hmm. and over time, you know, you're reading, everything starts to blur out on you, and you're kind of doing this. It may clear up for a few seconds and then blur out on you again. Right. You're drying out. Okay, so um, if an activity dries you out and causes that new onset of blurred vision mm -hmm. with maybe some foreign body sensation, feels a little gritty, put a moisturizing drop in before you do the activity and you're gonna be so happy because your vision's gonna be better, your eyes gonna feel better. And this is especially bad for people um, uh, that have jobs where you're working at a computer. Right. Um, and usually in a pretty heavily air conditioned environment, and staring at a screen all day. Mm -hmm. Keep a bottle of artificial tear, not anything that gets the red out, but an artificial tear by your screen and uh, put it in when you get to work, maybe mid-morning, after lunch, and before you go home, your eyes will feel so much better, and it's an easy way to help yourself without ever seeing me, so. Well, all right, well, talking about seeing you, if you are experiencing some problems with your eyes, I'd like to encourage you to go to West Georgia Eye Care. Absolutely, yeah, we, uh, it, it is a great place and, um, you know, we, we'd love to help you, so. Or follow up with your regular physician. And I want to thank you. Your speech today was absolutely wonderful. And I know that the seniors who are here learned a lot from it. And I know you're going to learn a lot from it as well. And if you'd like to share what we've learned from Dr. Cannon, then you can look at it on YouTube, CTV Beam YouTube, and share it with your friends. So I'm going to let you get back to work. And Perfect. I want to thank you so much for everything you've done today. And it was a pleasure to meet you. Well, thanks for having me. And I uh, really enjoyed talking. Alright, uh, yeah, y'all not a bunch of contact lens wearers, but basically you take care of your contacts. It's, uh, you know, you change cases. If you ever find old contacts, 
don't try them out. Mm. All right, yeah, <laughs> I've seen that go, go wrong multiple times. Um, and wear glasses. Again, if you don't have a foreign body on your eye, your eyes stay moister and happier. If you've got glasses on, you can put moisturizing drops in and just keep your eye happy while, they're, while you're reading. Um, and don't put contact lens in your mouth. I saw that one time. Mm -hmm. They, I was, I was, I don't know, we gotta see what the time. Yeah, we gotta clean up. Um, I was seeing this lady, she I was all red and irritated, and oh man, that's horrible. I don't know where you go, where do you work? I was I work in a stable. All right, well, yeah, I'll probably get some hay and stuff like that in there. And her four year old was sitting over on the, the chair next to her. like, Mommy, when are you gonna get the contact lens out of your mouth? I was like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't do that. That's so nasty. All right. Um, and don't wear dirty environments like, you know, I say Chattahoochee dirty, but don't wear contact lenses at Chattahoochee. That's just, don't do that. Um, uh, you know, or, or like a stable or something like that. You don't want any place dirty water can get on that contact. Those bugs love hanging on the contacts. Anybody know who this is? Paris Hilton there. Um, but she wears a colored contact lens. You look at that, um, zoom in, her eyes are brown. So there you go. Color contacts are pretty cool, but you know, you got to take care of them. Um, all right, thyroid eye disease. I just put the whole picture up here because you're not going to remember. Anybody remember her? Will Banks, Jennifer Will Banks, a runaway bride. But thyroid eye disease, use a perfect segue talking about thyroid eye disease, which is where your eyes are kind of popping forward. And, um, uh, <laughs> and if you have thyroid disease or you know somebody with thyroid disease, Tell them not to smoke because smoking sets thyroid disease on fire with regard to the orbit and it will make your eyes pop out of your head. We got to put you on steroids for a long time, make the back of your neck pop out like a pack of wieners. It's horrible and it breaks your bones down, makes y'all jittery and everything like that. So, um, it, so basically, um, if you have thyroid or you know somebody with thyroid problems, don't tell, tell them not to smoke. And if you see anybody that when you look at them, you're like, oh, you look surprised all the time. Just say, hey, look, go have your thyroid checked or go, you know, go check in with Canon and I'll check the thyroid because even if your hormone levels are normal, you can have thyroid eye disease, which is weird, but that's just how it is because it's an autoimmune disease and, um, and not uh, related to the hormone level. Can that be reversed? Mm. <laughs> you, you can treat it, you can stop the progression, but usually if you catch it early, and that's why you're like, wow, you know, my neighbor really looks like really shocked recently all the time. Say, hey neighbor, go get your thyroid checked out, or you know, go get those eyes checked out, because we can stop the progression, but once that tissue is swollen up and scarred, it's not going back to normal. It may burn itself out, and the lids may come down, and there's some things we can do to move it around. But the tissue back behind the eye can compress the optic nerve and make you go blind. That's not good. But there's some things we can do to stop that train before it gets out of the station <clears throat> with steroids and things like that. But, you know, it's better than having your eyes not move around and, you know, um, there you go. <laughs> all right, Shalazians, all right, how, how many people have had a sty before? Yeah, all right. So. It's a clogged oil gland. You know, we talked about blepharitis earlier. Everybody's like, oh, you got blepharitis. You know, that's a big word. What does that mean? That means clogged oil gland. So, um, and this is one of them. So, you have these glands all along the upper and lower eyelid, both eyelids, or both sides. It makes the oil layer of your tear gum, which is really great. Right up until the time it gets clogged up. And it keeps making that oil blows up and your body's like, whoa, it rushes in, tries to clean up that oil, but it's too thick, it can't eat it. So it builds a little wall around it. That's, you know, call it Shalazian or Calazian. I like saying Shalazian, so I'm more elegant, I don't know why. But, um, but then your body will either kick it out or it'll just wall it off, put a cap on it and ignore it. That's why if you get a sty, you see someone with a sty, tell them hot compresses four or five times a day, Keep it not scalding, of course, but just keep your body excited in that area. Push that thing out before it sets up camp, gets a toothbrush, a sleeping bag, and spends the night, right? So, um, uh, hot compresses aggressively when you see that sty. If one's been hanging around about two or three weeks, eh, I may have to take care of it. And that's where we put some numbing medicine in that eyelid, turn the eyelid over, make a tiny incision in the backside, and scoop out all that gelatinous goo that your body has walled off in there. So. Um, but uh, if you know you're prone to get these, 
you can you can help prevent them. Take fish oil by mouth. Don't put it. In, <laughs> don't put it by by. Told my brother that he's like, how am I supposed to get that fish oil in my eye? I was like, don't. Uh, like, Can is the worst doctor ever. You know, <laughs> walking around. Um, but uh, fish oil by mouth, two tablets twice a day is good. Hot compresses, okay. And you can do make it easy, like uh, dry rice in a sock, microwave it, make it hot. That's a great heating pad anyway. And then put a wet washcloth and put that uh, um, that over there, and it transfers that heat really well. Um, but if it stalls out, you still got a lump up there after two, three weeks. Come on in, we can take care of you. Can be recurrent, yes. All right, macular degeneration. This is the one everybody fears because you're like, whoa, I don't want to go blind later on in life, right? Yep. And so, but there's some things that we can do to help its, you know, prevent its progression. And there's some things that we can do if it turns wet that we didn't have access to before, which is fantastic. And I'll talk about those in a second. Um, uh, the, the reason you hear so much about it is because a small portion of patients with this problem have the most impressive vision loss. And it's impressive vision loss that gets everybody's attention. So what we want to do is not get impressive vision loss, but just monitor it. And things you can do to keep it from turning, there are two types of dry, people talk about the dry type, which is just where it kind of, if you think of it as like garbage building up on the, on the curb. Yeah, I just get tired of taking out the garbage. And so there's garbage that kind of gets underneath you know, we talked about the retina. Well, the macula is a very tiny part of that retina. Um, that does all of your central seeing. So it's super important, but there's a lot of traffic and a lot of metabolic activity goes on in that area. Takes a lot of cellular support in there. Um, uh, garbage building up underneath that, not compatible with good vision. So some people genetically predisposed to get that macular degeneration or heavy smoker or something like that. You get some buildup of trash under that macula, can't do business the way it used to. So your vision goes down goes on long enough and it starts to break down the, the barrier where vessels that are taking care of that macula can like sneak through that retina and now they start bleeding and leaking and causing all sorts of problems. Uh, that's dry macular degeneration. See that, uh, you know, the little uh, flex in there? It turns into that and that patient is not seeing well at all because that's a lot of blood. So that's the wet macular degeneration. The way to help prevent turning from this into this is the vitamin and you know again we don't know why but you know that's what was studied now yes well, what is the difference in the preservation and Occupy? nothing Occupy is preservation it's just excellent well, excellent that's what i was wondering if there's, Market. there's something in there i'm allergic to Occupy. really dr baby put me on Occupy. right and it gives me terrible headaches every time i take it so i well, no, you gotta, yeah, you gotta take take something else, but you can find out, like, look at the ingredients and take. Well, how about just loot and back set? Because that's what. That's we're, not, that's not gonna cut it. Gonna no, no. But here's the deal: you, if you can't take it, I've had patients that could swallow the tablet. Things like, well, you know, it. I'm exactly. Um, it, there are different brands, and you can try different brands. Sometimes it's, you know, it, it's a proprietary mix of, you know, potions and stuff in there but it's got all the same there's the a reds and as long as it has the a reds 2 formula in it is good right so they'll put all sorts of stuff in there to say like oh this has got zeaxanthin and stuff that we don't know what it does but we think it will help this sort of like chewing up sharp cartilage to help your knees I don't know. but <laughs> um yeah but basically it's uh, uh those vitamins that are in there a d e and k are, are the ones that um help prevent the progression of the dry type to the wet type. Try and piece together the ingredients, maybe find which ingredient you're allergic to or gives you the headache, and then just drop that one. Yeah, yeah. I dropped it. My husband, before he passed away last year, he uh, was taking Prestavision all the time. Uh -huh. yeah. And, uh, but his had turned from the dry to the wet. Yeah. And if you but get the shot, can do it, but, do it. but he was 95 years old, so yeah. But sometimes the shots work, but it's all better than what we used to have. So you know, don't fear the shot. If you need the it's shot, you get the shot. It's there's a lady out at the river place that takes uh, the shot, and she it does that great. It's amazing because what we used to have to do, take a big laser and just go. All right, you're blind now, but you shouldn't get any more blinder. 
You know, it was awful. I mean, they just basically cook all those vessels with a laser, blind you in the process, and then say, oh, well, there we go. We cured your leaky blood vessel. <laughs> so the shot is fantastic, um, you know, compared to what we used to have to do. And it was just, um, but it's a bad problem. There are people much smarter than me working on it, which I'm very thankful for. But for now, that shot is fantastic. But you've got to catch it. If your doctor says, watch this grid paper every day, and if you see any changes, you call us, do that. Because, you know, basically that's your screening device. Say, check, check, all right, move on. Because it will pick up small changes in the, in the grid paper. You'll see some lines start to disappear or wave up on you. If you see that happening, you go get in. Again, you want to catch this train before it starts getting looking like that. Okay, so that start out is a little bitty blood vessel that started to leak. And then, you know, over time, your body just, whoo, all right, whatever, I guess we're going blood vessels. So, um, and then you can't see anything, but your other eye may still be able to see. So you're like, oh, well, I can still breathe, I can still drive, I can still do that stuff for now. But unless you're checking each eye individually against a very sensitive grid paper, you don't know. So there you go. Ansler monitor. It's called an Ansler grid. It just looks like a grid paper. You may have seen one. Um, there you go. All right, so we'll do the nevers because this is kind of about prevention. Uh, never use Visine unless you got like a wedding in a red eye or, um, you know, uh, a business meeting in a red eye. And even if you do, you've got to go check out why you got a red eye. This is cosmetics for the eye only. It does not treat anything and it makes things worse. It's got a nasty preservative in it benzalkonium chloride, which is active ingredient, and bactine. So don't put it in your eye. Rex the surface cells, constricts the blood vessels, and then 12 hours later, they're bigger than they were before. It's like using Afrin. Have you ever been addicted to Afrin? You put it in, you're like, oh, this feels so good. And then like 12 hours later, you're like, ah, that can't be. Um, it, the vessels, you put it in again, and then they constrict a little bit, and then boom, now they're bigger. Pretty soon, they just forget how to go back to normal. If you ever stop using it, it looks like you've been on a two week bend or something like that. Don't use Visine, that's bad for your eye. You see somebody using Visine to treat the red eye, say, hey, why don't you go get that red eye checked out? Um, use numbing drops to help your eye quit hurting. Anybody ever give you a numbing drop to help eye pain send you home with it, slap them across the face, say, that's from Canon. Don't do that. But, um, but that's not a, this is not a symptomatic treatment, this is a diagnostic treatment, so the word uh, intervention, like, so that we can do a procedure, dig something out of your cornea or something like that. Um, numbing drops are bad for your eye, period. Yeah, mostly in the welding community, I don't know if anybody's a welder, you know, see if you got a grandson that's a welder. Yeah, don't, tell them not to use numbing drops, end up with a corneal transplant, something worse, corneal ulcer, something like that, bad for your eye. Um, Hammer or grind metal without eye protection, that's, you know, I don't know if that goes without saying. I've caught myself tempted to do that without going to get my glasses, you know. Yeah, just look away kind of like this. Don't do that. It'll like, you know, then it goes across your cornea sideways. It's, um, that's not good. Uh, you know, throw bottle rockets. Um, fourth, <laughs> I think it's amazing I'm alive when I think about the things that I've done with fireworks. But, but basically, you got, you know, kids on 4th of July throwing bottle rockets up into the air. Tell them not to do that. That's not mm -hmm. cool because... Um, even if it, um, it may not kill you or put a hole in you, but if it hits your eye, it'll knock your iris out. So you see now he's got two images, one here and one here. Light's coming in two different ways. That's not compatible with good vision. Um, shoot BB guns at each other. My dad, you told me he used to do this when he was a kid on the farm. I'm like, oh, it's amazing you're alive. This, you know, our guardian <laughs> angels all probably going to be worn out, but that's what happens. This is actual iris coming out of the eye, and that eyeball is probably going to be coming out. I don't know. You may be able to put it back together again, but no, um, yeah, it goes without saying. Break glass. Yeah, don't throw glass or somebody breaking glass. Tell them to take that outside um, or wear protective eyewear. Oh, you may be breaking glass. Ignore red, painful eye. You know, a pink eye. You got pink. Your eye's pink. All right. So your eye's pink. That doesn't tell you anything. Could be from a virus, which is what everybody calls pink eye. It could be iritis. It could be an infection. It could be something else. Um, get it checked out, especially if it's not responded to certain, you know, your regular run-of-the-mill therapies. Um, sometimes your eye will get pink for putting uh, topical antibiotic in, like genomycin. That's a big popular one. Um, a lot of primary docs like to use genomycin. It gets the red in because nobody's eye likes genomycin. So just, you know. 
I hate to be the only one asking questions. No, no, hit it. That's where it is. Everybody going to fall but asleep. When I was out at River Place for a few months, uh, the lady about two doors down had the pink eye. Yep. And uh, I said, I always thought it was contagious. Some are, yeah. Because it finally got out there. A lot of people got the pink eye. Yeah. I didn't thing. thank the Lord, but yeah. I did. And I, I'd always heard it was contagious. Yeah, no, it, the nasty, highly viral, you know, contagious pink eye or EKC, the epidemic carrot conjunctivitis, is like if they got a cold and now they got a pink eye, you stay away from them, all right? Don't let them touch anything in your house. <laughs> like, just shoo off. Um, you know, because, it, yeah, if they had an upper respiratory infection and then pink eye, mm, go get that checked out. You need to see somebody special. You can't hang out here with me. Go sit at somebody else's table. <laughs> That's a, don't be mean though. It's just like you know, but I'm gonna keep things clean. Um, you know, keep don't keep your super glue where you keep your eye ointment. All right, I've seen that once. It just seems like that would be obvious, but uh, you know, um, <laughs> it works. It works quick. Huh? said that. Yeah. She had both in her purse, and she just grabbed the wrong one and she glued her eye together. Oh yeah. And there's, the thing is, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't just hold it and it glues your lashes, or you're like, you know, anybody ever got super glue? You know, it sticks. It sticks skin much better than it sticks, you know, your toy that you're trying to glue together. That's for sure. But dang, all right. And don't, um, uh, don't, huh? What do you do? Because you can wait, wait for your skin and all that stuff to cycle through, and you're like, okay. Oh wow. Um. By like pour, don't pour uh, water into acid. I don't know why I felt compelled to include that. It's just one of those things that you just never think of, but it explodes like you know. And there's acid everywhere. Um, and don't smoke. Uh, twins. One on the right smoke. One on the left does not. So that's um, you know it is not good for your skin. It just uh, it does a number on it. So um, you see anybody smoke and just say, hey, look, you should stop doing that. And be like, oh yeah, get in line. Everybody told me that. <laughs> It don't pop your eyes out. <laughs> this is a party trick, but it can blind you. Um, you know, it, it's called globe subluxation, and sometimes your tissue just so loose that it'll get stuck back behind your eyeball. But what it does to your optic nerve is, boop, and your optic nerve's like, Bleh. and then over time, it's like, hey, I'm gonna check out and die. You can't see anymore. So, um, you see anybody like doing this party trick? Say, hey, you shouldn't do that. So. <laughs> And there we go. And don't assume that God doesn't have a sense of humor because this is our baby, um, you know. And uh, after 17 years of dead air in the baby making department, this happened to us. So we all, you know, you know, so our youngest is seven years old. We've got three adopted children, and, and this is Remy Kate. And so Remy Kate is rocking our world right now. But, um, that's what everybody says. Oh, so, yeah. You know, I was going to shave my it's head. Have the hair you yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's it. Any questions at all? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you were looking at the popping eyes. Remember the actor Peter Lorre? I think it was him, those eyes that were kind of popping out. Probably thyroid disease. Okay. Yep. That's a thing. Because I don't do it without actually the lid sucking back behind the eyeball. After I had the cataract sur surgery, I could see 2020. Yep. And then one day I was washing and I had the Clorox and I dropped it and it splashed in, in my eyes. Yeah. And so I ran to Dr. Babies because I could get that. Yeah. And uh, he washed it out real good. Yep. It, but now I only have 2040 in my right eye. Ah. It knocked 20 out of your 2020. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if you ever get anything in your eye, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go get under the shower. Close it all. Just look up into it and be like, eh, I guess this is what I'm doing for the next 15 minutes. Because rinsing it out is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth thing that you need to be concerned about. Um, because you're not going to hurt it with the water. But if that, you know, that um, uh, basic material is it before, you know, uh, Good job. I realized yeah. it was burning too bad. So. That's the thing. So, uh, so yeah, it rinse it out. You get anything, you're not, any question, even stuff this harmless, you get like, you know, cooking oil. It's not going to hurt you. It's going to make you blurry from the oil. But you rinse it out. Now, hot cooking oil, I don't hurt you. Don't do that. But, um, but anyway, rinse it out. That's the thing. Rinse it out. Unless you get an injury, then don't rinse it out. Then you go to, so that's for chemicals only, not for like 
you know, baby gun injuries or anything like that. That it? No. Oh. Hey, thank you guys for having me. I think he's got a question. I'll hit it. What about his vitamins you see? It says uh, for over 40 years old or whatever. Oh, for your eyes? Yeah. Man, Paul Harvey, before he passed, I just, I'm like, Paul, you don't have to go there. I like Paul Harvey, but he started peddling eye vitamins for every condition under the sun because the A-Reds formula was successful at slowing down the progression of dry macular degeneration to the wet macular degeneration. That's all it's good for, okay? Now, I'm not saying vitamins aren't good. I'm not saying that we don't know what the heck they do. I am saying we don't know what the heck they do. But it's like, <laughs> but basically the eye vitamins are only show to help if you got some macular degeneration and slowing the progression from the dry to the wet type in a certain subset of patients. So, you know, ask your, ask your eye doctor, you know, hey, should I be on this vitamin? But as far as like, oh, you need to take this vitamin. No, you don't need to take that vitamin. Probably, you know, unless you got macular degeneration, some doctors told you to be on that vitamin. So that's, you know, really, but they can say whatever they want. And then as long as at the end they say, Stephen has not been evaluated by the FDA. This is not designed to cure, prevent any disease. They, then they got a free pass, they can tell you buy whatever the heck you want. Did you eat your leafy green vegetables and your carrots and whatnot? That's good for you. But um, as far as buying high price supplements, because somebody tells you they're good for you, be very skeptical. Anybody else? I have a question. Hit it. I have a friend who decided, you know, she was always told to take a baby. I, people were told to take a baby aspirin. Yeah. So she did. She just started taking it. The doctor didn't tell her to. And she thought, well, this is working so well. So she was taking two baby aspirin, true story, of every night. And now she has macular degeneration. And my question is, now they're talking about it caused bleeding in the head? Or yeah. That, could that have caused? Not typically, you know, because you have to have the abnormal vessel there before you get the bleeding. And then when it bleeds, could it bleed a little bit more than it would normally? Maybe, but you still got the abnormal vessel there. It's not gonna cause that abnormal vessel to grow. Okay. So it's not gonna give you the macular degeneration. If it bleeds, could it bleed a little bit more, John Aspirin? Yeah, probably, but it's not gonna set it off. But that's a good point, yeah, with the um, over 70 or whatever, now they're saying like, nah, you, know, you, know, you don't have heart disease um, or stroke. That's the, you know, that's the, the caveat there. But take with your primary doc before you take any of that advice, because I hadn't read that study myself, and so I don't know exactly if that's hype or not, but there you go. Glaucoma. Glaucoma is peripheral vision loss from optic nerve damage related sometimes the high pressure in the eye, okay? So glaucoma, you're losing your peripheral vision. It's not like you see a big black spot over there, it's just that that vision just disappears. And from optic nerve damage, you remember the optic nerve where 1.2 million fibers headed back to the brain, that gets damaged. And we can measure it, it's pretty crazy. But um, it eats away at your peripheral vision. If anybody ever says, oh, you look, your optic nerves look funny, funny or you know, suspicious for glaucoma, Get your eyes checked yearly because the only sin in glaucoma is being off the radar, right? Don't disappear for three or four years because that's a disease of decades, not a months or weeks. But if you let it go unmonitored and that pressure just keeps climbing, that optic nerve just like, ah, see you later. And then that peripheral vision, ooh, and then you just boop, and you bump into something and we can't get that vision back. So glaucoma is all about prevention, not about getting that vision back once it's gone. So if you've got glaucoma, one, use your drops. Two, get checked for your doctor's instructions. And three, don't go miss. What about those bloated things you're talking about? I, can, I did see them in my left eye, but they went away, but I can still see one in my right. Yeah, it's just that jelly that turns into strands and liquid, pulls away from the wall of the eye and kind of wads up in your vision. Then you look against a bland background, like a day sky or neutral colored wall or something like that, you're actually seeing the light pass through that strand and get bent with a little shadow. And you'll see it float over here and you'll see it float over here. The thing about those is if you see a bunch of new ones, you call us, because that could be a sign of retinal tear or detachment. Probably not, but if it is, we can put a little laser around that tear and try and prevent it. 
from turning into a big retinal detachment, which is a big deal, because then you've got to go over to Mayfield and he straps a big rubber band around your eye and squeezes it in the shape of a grape, turns it all beet red and everything, and you go home, and now you got like three diopters and myopia is no fun. So um, uh, basically, if you get new floaters or flashes, or certainly a curtain come down over your vision, you call us so we can get you in quickly. But most of the time, you live long enough, you're gonna get a floater. Most of the time, your brain just learns to ignore it, you know, and just tune it out, and it's just, Amazing how your brain does that. But. I have glassy things, not not black photos, but glassy things. And Dr. Bailey said it was uh, visual migraines. Oh yeah, those are fun. I mean, sounding. Okay. I don't have a thing for. Well, I have to take a baby aspirin and lie down. Uh -huh. and about fifteen minutes, they're gone. Yep. But that's terrible while it's going on. Like a little light show, a little kaleidoscopic, mm -hmm. and, you know, thing that's all moving Even when around. when you close your eyes, they're still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's in your brain. Right. It's, it's your body shutting off blood supply to the back of your brain, which makes you think you're having a stroke because it kind of sounds like you're having a stroke. But uh, the caveat to that is if you ever get one for the first time and you're driving, get off the road because yeah. your brain is just making stuff up at that point. It's like a little Bob Ross of your brain sitting, oh, pretty trees and all that sort of thing. Um, you're not seeing the real thing. You're going to run over somebody. So you put your hazards on, get off the road, and there you go. It's terrible. Yeah. And what causes cataracts? Birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would be like, uh, genetics and birthdays, and, and sometimes steroids, but most of the time birthdays. So. And everybody's kind of mature at a different rate, so. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you guys for coming. Y'all want to